I recently joined the Discord server of Matt, who is working on the game with the working title Space 64, which you should check out. And he mentioned in the side sentence that he will need to figure out dynamic music at some point in the future. I thought, well, I also need to do that, so might as well make a good impression. Decided to do it now, rather than later, and offered to share my notes with him. To which he replied, How did you get into my house? And so, for basically the first time ever, I actually wrote down what I was doing and how it works. And now I might as well share it with you, right? So, whenever we are working with something, it usually pays off to understand what it actually is we're working with. What is sound? Well, for the purposes of this, sound is a wave. And in order to capture and digitize a wave, we record its magnitude in regular intervals. These recorded values are called samples. And in Unity, we can set the audio source components to start playback at specific samples, which is the key to what we're doing. There's also the sample rate, which tells us how many samples per second our sound file has, which we need for some math later. I'm also a musician, I think, so it made sense to me to think about my music in musical terms. And so we also need to understand the concept of beats, which are quarter notes, and bars, which hold a number of beats and subdivide a musical piece. Easy, right? There's also the tempo, or BPM, which tells us just how many beats there are per minute, and with some very simple math, how long each beat is, but we'll get to that. Those are the terms that we need. So what are we doing with them? Well, when it comes to dynamic music, there are two options we can pursue. Layers and segments. Layers are layers of the same track overlaid on each other that you can fade in and out as you need them. And they're easy baby bullshit and also boring. But I tell you how to do them anyways. Get as many audio sources as you have layers. One of them will be your master, the other your slaves. No, no not, not like that. Have them all play, but every frame set the sample of the slaves to that of the master. That way, they all stay in sync. Now you just fade in and out as you need. Easy, boring, moving on. Segments are a little bit more complicated, but only a little. The idea here is to subdivide your musical track into chunks that click together like Lego and decide which block is the most appropriate to play on next, on runtime, meaning that your music will dynamically react to whatever is going on during the game and does so in a musical manner. Hopefully. Now you might think that you can just cut your audio up into thousands of smaller files and load and play each one as you need them, but there's an issue with that. Namely that even though PCs are pretty fast these days when it comes to accessing stuff on drives, especially if you're using an SSD, it's still not instant. And in the worst case scenario, it might take your PC long enough to find the file it's looking for for it to become noticeable. Instead, we're going to leave all our segments in one file and simply tell our game where the segments are. That way the PC only has to access a single file and jump around in it, which is significantly faster. And we like it when we can make something faster without having to put much more effort into creating it, right? First of all, we need a song. And this song needs to fulfill a few requirements. If you're doing your own music, pay attention to this. If you're having somebody else do your music, communicate these requirements. Requirement 1. The music needs to be written with segments in mind. Duh. Requirement 2. The entire thing needs to be in one tempo. Well, technically it doesn't have to be in one tempo, but the system I'm implementing does not account for tempo changes, so if you want to have those, you're gonna have to modify your code accordingly. Requirement number 3. For the sake of everybody's sanity, have the music start on beat one of bar one. No dead air in the beginning. Just straight into the music. Now that we have a file that works, let's get coding. Wait, hold on. Just to clarify, I will not be showing you my entire code. I'm going to be explaining what the code does, but you're going to have to do your own implementation. Copying somebody's code line by line does not teach you anything, and it's the best way of getting stuck in tutorial hell, and I don't want to be responsible for that. So, let's go. Step 1! 
Do the data and the stuff! Okay, we need to tell the computer where all the segments are, right? How do we do that? Well, we could open up Audacity, navigate to the start of each segment, find out which sample that is and write that down, but that is slow and boring! And I forgot to take my ADHD medication today, so we're not doing that. Instead, we're going to identify the start of each segment more musically, by writing down which bar they start in. Or by having our musician write down the respective bars for us. Now that we have the raw data, we need to prepare it. You know, salt and pepper, marinate it, really, really let it soak. It's gonna be worth it. Oh, and we also need to sort our data. Now, I can't actually help you all that much with this one, because how you sort your data depends on how you intend to control your music later on, which depends on what your game is. You need to think about what you want to achieve and organize things accordingly. For Sanctuary Zero, I'm operating with the concept of intensity levels. Zero meaning no music, one for exploration, two for combat, and three for boss fights. So, I created a scriptable object that holds a reference to my music file, as well as three lists, one for each intensity level, that hold integers, representing the starting bars of each segment. Since all my segments will be the same length, I don't really need to worry about that per segment and can just plonk that in as a singular integer. Same for the beats per bar, but this might not be right for your project. Think about what you need. Okay, now let's get to the actual code. First, let's implement the math side of things that we need to make the logic side of the code work. Don't worry, it's just two functions and neither are very complicated. First, we need to convert a bar, given as an integer, into a beat, also an integer. We do this by multiplying the bar integer with our beats per bar value. And that's it. Super simple. Then, we need to convert a given beat, integer, into a sample, also integer. This one is a bit more involved. Step 1! We need to figure out how long a single beat is in seconds. We do this by dividing 60, as in seconds per minute, by the BPM of our song. The result will need to be a float, since we'll most likely be dealing with decimals. Step 2! We calculate how long a beat is in samples. To do this, we multiply the result of step 1, the length of a beat in seconds, by our sample rate. Step 3! We calculate the starting sample by multiplying our beat integer with the result of step 2, the length of a beat in samples. Step 4! We cast the result of step 3 into the files of Mount Doom. Or an integer. Because we support strongly typed languages in this household. Step 5! We return our integer result. And that's the math. It's really simple. So now we're going to implement a function that loads a new segment. Step 1 of that is to decide which segment to load. This is again up to you. For me, I just look up the current intensity level and choose a random segment from the appropriate list. We then need to figure out the start sample of that segment. Segment? We then need to figure out the start sample of that segment, which we do by calling the two math functions from earlier in a row. Convert the start bar to a beat and that beat to a sample. Set that one as our audio source of sample. We will also calculate the ending sample of our segment here and write it to a class variable. I called that one cutoff sample. To do that, we take the starting bar and add the length of the segment in bars to it. Then we again convert to a beat and then to a sample. And ta da! That's where our segment stops. A quick aside here. Some of you might have thought hey, wait a second. If we play back music at like 48,000 samples per second, but only control our samples from code like 60 times per second or whatever. Won't there be like inaccuracies? Yes. Yes, there will be. And we can safely ignore them. See, the human brain starts differentiating between pulses and a constant signal at around 10 milliseconds. But we only actually start to feel rhythm at around 250 milliseconds, give or take. Granted, we want to keep the inaccuracies as low as possible. But at 60 frames per second, we're talking about the worst case scenario of 
about 13 milliseconds. Most people, including musicians, will not notice that. So don't worry about that unless your game runs at like 10 frames per second, in which case you have other problems. Okay, we're almost done. The last thing we need is a tiny bit of logic that actually keeps track of whether the current segment is done and then calls the load new segment function. This one goes in the update function and all it does is compare the current sample of the audio source to the cutoff sample. If the source sample is equal or greater than the cutoff, load a new segment. And that's it. No, really. Here, check it out. I'm using the keyboard to control the intensity here, just for debugging, but you can hear how at the end of each segment, if the intensity has changed, the song changes. Dynamic music is one of those things that seem daunting and complicated on the surface, but as with most things in game development, it's actually fairly easy to conquer if you take the time to slow down, do some research, and think about what it actually is that you need to do to make it work. Or you could just use FMOD, I guess. <laughs> 